Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help to bridge the gap between novice and expert. A while ago, I did a JavaScript tip on using query selector all. I will include the link to that tutorial in the description section of this video. In that tutorial, we were looking at these tips. Basically, we wanted to convert the node list that we received from Query Selector All to an array because by converting it to an array, we could then do different things with it. And so we looked at how we would convert that node list to an array. Here's the code that we were using as a part of that tutorial. So Query Selector All creates a node list and we place it in LI. However, a node list is array-like. It is not an array. So if we want to do certain things with it, like we would do with an array, pop for each, then it needs to be converted to an array. The tip I shared was the old way of converting that node list to an array. And if you're interested in how this works, you can visit that tutorial. Now on that tutorial, one of you made a comment, which I really appreciate. I appreciate all the comments that I receive. And that comment pointed to a better way. Sometimes we get so used to the way we have done things in the past, we don't use new methods. That new method is with an array static function, array.from. Now this was made available with the ECMAScript 2015 standard. So it's pretty well supported now. So let's look at how we would change this code so it works with array.from. And then we'll look at another trick that we're able to do with array.from. So right here is the line that converts the node list that we retrieved here. Right here, we convert that node list to an array using this technique. And we're going to replace that now. Basically, what we enter is array dot from, and then in parentheses, the array-like object that we want to convert to an array. Much simpler than the previous method. So now what the rest of this code does, it pops off one of those elements just to show that it is an array. And then we use for each to go through each element and change the text to red. So let me save that. There we go. They were all changed to red except for the one that we popped off. Now, we know this is necessary to do because if we comment that out and simply put li underscore array equal to li, then we refresh. It doesn't work. We don't see the changes, but also if we open the console, we see that we receive an error. Dot pop is not a function because it's not an array, so it doesn't recognize the pop method. So it is necessary to convert it to an array, and array.from is a simpler way of doing that. We don't have to type near as much. And it was built for that purpose. So a great reminder from one of the viewers. Now, there's something else that's nice about array.from that I want to show you. This is probably something you would use infrequently, but when you need to use it, it can be important. You may have come into a situation where you need to define an array, something like this, and when you define the array, you need to specify the size of that array. And so we put a number inside of the parentheses after new array. And that will specify an array with a length of four, as you can see. Now, another way to do this is with array.from. And once I do it, I'm going to show you why this is better. So 
So the way we specified it using array.from is we pass in an object. And all the object has is a property length with the number indicating how long of an array we want to define. This here is an array-like object because basically array.from looks for a length property. And if it has a length property, then it tries to convert that into an array. And so let's press return and see what we get. Now, if I do array one and display the third element, it shows undefined. If I do arr2 and display the third element, we also get undefined. So it makes you think that they're the same, but really they're not. The first array we, we created using new array is empty. It is an empty array. It has a length of four, but there is nothing in each of the elements. Where the second one places an undefined value in each of these elements. Now they both display undefined when we access the particular element. So that makes it a bit confusing. However, if we just display the array, we can see it says empty times four. And for the second one, if we just display, we see that it actually has an undefined value in each of those. Now, why does that matter? Why is that even important? Well, the reason it is important is because if you create an empty array, it can cause you problem, problems in certain situations. And let me just show you what one of those would be. So one of the methods that's available on the array prototype is map. The purpose of map is to take one array and create a second array based upon the elements in that first array. Basically, it iterates through each element in the array and uses it to create a second array. Well, map will skip empty elements where it won't skip elements with undefined. So that could mess you up. Let's just do a simple example that would show you that happening. So I'm going to create a, a third array and set that equal to the first array. And then we're going to map that array to a new array. Now, map is a higher order function. And if you're interested in learning more about it, I do have a tutorial on map and some of the other array prototype methods. And I'll include a link to that tutorial in the description section of this video. But since it's a higher order function, we pass into it a function. And that function determines what the new array will look like. Now, this is a great candidate for an arrow function, but for those of you where this may be new to, I think arrow functions sometimes confuse the issue. So I'm just going to use a regular function. So this is going to create an array in ARR3 by iterating through each element in ARR1. The problem is, since it's empty, Will it iterate through any of them? Well, that's what we're going to find out. So I press return there. Now, let's create a fourth array. And we're going to use ARR2, the array that was created using array.from. And we'll pass in this exact same function. So basically what we're saying here is that the array that we create put a one in each element. Now let's see what we get. If we look at third position, we see undefined in ARR3. However, ARR4, we actually see a number there. Now if we were to look at those arrays, Empty still, even though we used map on it. But this one is not empty. So map was able to iterate through each element 
in the array that was created with array.from. So if you need to set up an array with a certain length, because you'll be adding to that, or for some other reason, you should use array.from to do that. So two applications of array.from. If you found that helpful, go ahead and give it a like. I also have some other suggestions if you want to continue adding to your JavaScript skills. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And finally, at my website, allthingsjavascript.com, I have a complete list of tutorials, but I also have full courses if you feel you need a course to get you going with JavaScript. Thanks for watching.